Welcome back to the New Testament by Pentecost Reading Challenge. I hope that you're enjoying this as much as I am. Today we turn to the book of Romans. Romans was likely written around the year 58 AD from Corinth, just before Paul's final journey to Jerusalem and resulting in arrest, imprisonment, and ultimately, by Christian tradition, his execution. Paul did not know this community, Thus, this letter is focused less on specific situations and more about introducing himself and his theology to a group of Christ followers he planned to visit and from whom he hoped to receive support. Note that in the year 49 AD, Emperor Claudius had ordered all Jews expelled from Rome, including Jewish Christ followers. Acts 18.2 tells of Paul meeting Prissa and Aquila, two who had been expelled. A Roman historian named Surtus also confirms this expulsion. Thus, from 49 to 54 AD, the Christ community there would have been entirely Gentile. Then in 54 AD, the edict was reversed, and Jews and Jewish Christians began to return with predictable strife. This is the context of Paul's writing. This is admittedly a challenging two days of reading. It would be very easy to get bogged down in details, as this single book is well worth a full semester's study or more. You'll find many beloved passages. Notice how they connect through Paul's full letter. Remember that we are doing a survey of the New Testament, an overview, a rapid read of the entire New Testament to make connections, open new insights. We're not going for mastery of any particular text. Breathe. Take your time. Let the flow of the text speak to you. We'll be into much more familiar narrative gospel territory soon. Much of Paul's letter to the Romans focuses on the relationship between Jews and Gentiles in Christ. It is tempting to cherry-pick verses as proofs, but notice how Paul is describing and then playing off of arguments made by two different sides in hope of finding common ground and a unified community. In the first half of this letter, Paul makes magnificent arguments for justification by grace through faith. It's an argument that's been central to Christian thought, especially among Protestant reformers. But note that Paul is not writing about how to get to heaven, but rather salvation, which for Paul is a transformed life here and now, living in loyalty to and trust of the good news of the risen Christ, not just a set of beliefs. Given its more general focus, Romans is the closest thing we have to a systematic theology from Paul, and it has not surprisingly had tremendous importance in the development of Christian thought. Augustine in the 4th century reported being converted to faith by one of its passages. Martin Luther found courage to stand in opposition to the Pope and princes, and John Wesley's experience of a strangely warmed heart came at a gathering where Luther's introduction to this letter was being read. Paul sees believers as dying and rising in Christ being transformed in this life, already a part of the new creation. Blessings on your reading.